Well, if you stopped watching that one after 20 minutes, Baskin and the boys won. Except they didn't. After a 21-minute fire giant secure goes wrong, they lose four members. And Graham, at the end of the day, in 24 minutes, a 7K gold lead and a level 20 Chernabog yeah. at 19 minutes somehow loses. Uh, let's talk about that real quick. Level 20, yeah? yeah? And you end up getting to level 20 at 19 minutes. That's unusual. Normally, a level a minute is something we saw in season one, season yeah. two, where you're looking to farm up. It's not often we get to see that level at lead at a certain point. We said it picks and bands, though. It was going to be around Baskin and Meerkat on the carries of this team to make it happen. And Baskin did just that at the start. Yeah, but he ends 7-2-2. Two and two, So that's a good slash line, right? Except the, the last of the two were at the fire giant and at the end of the game. And that's just tough. And that's kind of the worst thing about it. It's like, no one's going to remember the slash line. All they're going to see is you're lost. They're not going to look at your <laughs> right. score and go, well, you was 7-2-2, two two, so right. it's not your fault. Um, I do love what we saw at Locked and Loaded again, though. That the, the end fight that we saw right at the end of this game, yeah. sure, we're going to see some early kills first but that last fight we were fighting in the jungle around a fire giant camp that was dead right. there was nothing in the jungle there was no towers there and we were all grouped up in the area around the fire giant for what for what exact reason i don't know and that's the reason that locked and goated managed to find the win there because they'd already taken that middle phoenix after the fire giant push uh the fire giant you know frail right. defense right and it just caused more problems for them well this is always so sneaky to look at these early game replays because yeah. everything is going for the red team that it all comes crumbling down seemingly in an instant. I think one thing they brought up on the cast that I like to touch on is that they mentioned, you know, fighting around the Chernabog, not necessarily where he is, yeah, but team fighting better with him kind of in that engagement. Do you think they did it good? Obviously not, they lost. Well, in the early game, they did sure. it. No, no, it's where, wherever Sino tried to go and pressure, they, they had to be willing and available to keep an eye on where, right. side, where he was in the mid lane on Cheddarbug. And a couple of times when he went towards the dual lane, guess who turns up, basking out of nowhere, trying right. to play around that ultimate. It's quite difficult on that Cheddarbug in mid. And we're going to get to see some this of this the late. Way. Yeah, there's a massive Kukul Khan ultimate. And the, the effective oh, 100 to 0 on, on Baskin is, is kind of what turns this one around. Yeah, and obviously, right, at max distance, it's kind of hard to hear that noise out of Kukulkan yeah. too. If you can get it from the furthest distance away, you will only get a little bit of a warning on the ground of a sort of trajectory right. of where it's going to land. But if you don't get that sound cue, it can throw you off. And Baskin got hit by that, which is something I'm not used to seeing. We, we've talked so much about that, that Fire Giant, some of the late game team fights that didn't go their way. Talk to me a little bit about this jungle set, uh, something they brought up in the cast. Maybe a little bit of an unusual play style there for Sino. Well, maybe not. It's, it's definitely an assassin. It's a late game god that can run you sure. down. I don't know what, against the composition that they were against. It's going to be as useful as they right. want it to be. A lot of tanks around you, a lot of hard CC or damage reduction. Right. Osiris and RTO both really cause problems for set in quite a few ways. And then the chase potential to the likes of a Morrigan and Chernabog, not as good as you want it to be. But in a jungle position, it is a late game carry, just like Carly. And this is kind of the, the difficult point, I think, of this conversation when you, you start to look towards picks and bans now for game three. Could be the final game here. Yeah. Baskin and the boys lose this one. You are winning throughout 20 minutes of that game. I don't think there's all that much to change necessarily in your winning, picks and right? bans, right? That's all it is, is just, just keep winning now. No, I, I do think what we need to see a little bit more at Baskin and the boys is right. they put a lot of pressure on Meerkat, who's new into that Hunter role right. as well. Sure, he played a mage there and he's comfortable with the mages, mm -hmm. but I think there was just too much pressure on Baskin and Meerkat to be the only real damage dealers, and the rest were on the control work. I think they need just an extra person in there to help with the, the damage dealing towards right. the tail end. Well, and Meerkat, you know, with that Morgan, we figured maybe towards the late game, if we had gotten there, he was going to change yeah. into that Chernabog a little bit more. We saw him often into that Kamazots for usually a bit of escape, so we didn't get to that point in that game. Yamoja again, first round of bans here. It Not surprising surprise at all. I think she's quite versatile at the moment as well. We've seen a couple of players actually put her in the jungle. She can yep. do a little bit of the mid lane just because of her scale and her abilities are so potent right. and clearing waves. But it's late game that Yamoja really will shine. She's a pretty much the best healing bot you could ask for on a team. Yeah, why not? And she should not be using a single of her ability outside of the ultimate when it's available other than heal, heal, heal. Sure. And Kamazot's back in the van column as well. Shing Chin, Kukul Khan this time. Ben Delco, Good high basket in the boys. You like that one. Yeah, maybe because Pagon had such a good two games of like... Yeah, why not? When the casters were talking about it, it was both the ultimates. It's like every time right. the ultimate came out, he felt like he, he did something useful with it. Sure. It was a attempt at a goal for you secure or good damage to the enemy front line. And do you agree? I, I assume Flash. you do with them banning out the Thor here. I mean, I think he's at a point now where he has the ability to impact a game. Either you're going to pick him, maybe you have to take him away. Yeah, I think that's also against the compositions you're against too and what the, sure. the play styles are of 
locked and goaded too. I mean, both teams have Thor players on this, mm -hmm. and Thor did get a couple of buffs before this came through. Lightning buffs. Obviously, he starts to take a couple of nerfs now, but that's one of the reasons he's very potent, and people just don't want to deal with him. Well, and their first round of picks here, Persephone is going to be first on the I'm board for Baskin and the boys, followed up by I Merlin and Kali in. for locked and goaded. Remember, Sino in game one on that Kali was uh, forced to be reckoned with. Yeah, but with the Persephone pick now, is that going to go to Baskin in the mid lane this time around? If it does, yeah, right. then it's going to be play around Baskin again. You want to play around Persephone's farm, those plants. If she's not got the plants around her, she's not as useful and she's not as powerful in these team fights. Well, as rough as game one was for Baskin and the boys, you saw good moments out of Baskin on that Persephone. Won, we did. So if nothing else, if that's kind of your game plan here is Baskin and the boys, maybe a good pick to get him on something that, comfortable again. Hachiman has dead. been big in this set as well. No, Cyrus now for the second time. Yeah, it looks like the Hachiman's been taken away this time, right. so make sure the Shua doesn't have it on himself. But Kali, once again, probably for the jungle for Sino. We saw it in game one. Doesn't surprise me to see him maybe go back that way, and then this could be for Aninster on the circuit. And talk to me a little bit about Osiris. Now the second game in a row where yeah. we've seen him, do you assume, solo lane? <laughs> uh, well, uh, the sort of every single better, generally what you look for is early pressure. Everyone sure. thinks pressure, pressure, pressure is the most important thing. And Osiris is someone that is a lane bully. He can get early pressure with the abilities, just mm. constantly clearing the wave and poking at the same time. Right. He puts a lot of pressure on whoever you put in that lane. Now, it ca you can just nullify him by going for someone like a Jormungand that we saw previously. Yep. They can kind of like just slow it down and hold his own there, right. but you'll take a lot of poke. But Osiris is all about individual lane pressure and it gives me an idea that Baskin and the boys are not going to help out Aquarius there. It's going to be him on his own on an island trying to do what he can do. And he was and actually throughout the first two games of this set I think has been able to hold his own relatively well under pressure in that solo lane. Yeah. Sir Kat and Kali you pointed it out and this is kind of a run back of game one for Locked and Goaded. If you're Baskin and the boys here this double assassin composition starting no, off already just what's in place. the back of your mind maybe as you move through honestly i'm probably looking at kumba Kana again as a really good lockdown target for someone like carly can also shut down some of the mobility of sir cat other options geb's pretty useful into this comp too even though he's low pressure in the early game though shields could really help against the fearlesses the kisses is still doing well um but i'm excited to see exactly where they choose to go this kakulan is definitely interesting to me yeah hmm. is that maybe pivot up where you think that Osiris is going to go? Yeah, it kind of flexes Osiris more than Kukulun for me. Right. Especially with Horus now locked in. So it's probably Osiris in the jungle right. and Kukulun in that solo lane up against the tier. And one of the reasons that may have happened is because that tier got locked in. Right. I'm not sure exactly how the matchup really goes at the moment with tier versus Osiris, but I wouldn't say tier he really enjoys himself in that early game. We're going to potentially get our first look at Heimdall here Ooh. for locked and goaded. What do you like about this guy? What's not to like? I mean, you know, he just I don't know, he can see everything, right? Land a basic Chunks attack damage, and deal a ton of damage, <laughs> right? Like, and then he's got the, you know, the big ultimate that just sends him to the Himes, takes him off the map for multiple seconds. Right. It's probably one of the most potent ultimates in the game, just for moving a member of the team, not just the damage. Well, Graham, this is potentially the final game here in this best of five. Do you like what Baskin and the boys have drafted? Do you think they have a good chance at winning their first game in this it's set? It's the same sort of thing from Baskin and the boys, though, Dave. They've gone exactly the same sort of route. They're relying on Meerkat. They're relying on Baskin. Didn't work game two. Cut it in game three. Well, they've moved on to the group stages, but they're going to try to get on to the finals here today. Locked and goaded. Game three. Let's go. Thanks, Dawson Hindu on the desk. Still finching aggro here as he moved to game number three. The last chance for Basket and the boys to show us that they can flip that switch. And, and that's kind of what's always in the back of your mind, right, is, is that they can flip that switch. We thought it all last year. But remember, they didn't qualify out as our modder, right, mostly that right. same team. When they needed to flip the switch, they did not quite have enough. I wonder if maybe that, that's in the back of these guys' mind, that they've got to play at that level all the time. I mean, I think that this is week one. There is going to be some ramp time. Oh, yeah, and uh, there's a long day. <laughs> yeah, and a long day. I, but but Locked and Goaded had an equally long day. That's true. You know, I, I think that is relevant to both sides. I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of this composition. Kakulun Jungle is one that I've never really subscribed to. I just don't... Th you need to be able to transform on the gank or else it's not good enough. Right. And that just doesn't seem like a good enough strategy to me. Is again, Sino starts on his purple buff. And With Hog. Goes, yeah, with Hog, but doesn't use it right away. Instead, he uses it on red buff. And Relentless One is there with a Vision Shard to make sure that Horus doesn't invade on speed and prevents him from doing that. An interesting start from Locked and Goaded, and it gets Sino the speed buff at the very least. Pangan in some trouble being harassed a bit by Geno in the jungle. And this, it's an aggressive comp relying a lot on these warriors there from Pask and the Boys. I know you don't love Mast 
on this Kukulin in the jungle, but I think this can still work. Baskin played this Persephone at a really high level back in game number one. There is still yep. a lot of bully potential here with this roster. I don't know if mass ganks have mm. to be great for this for this draft to work. Love that little play from Stewart to use that uh, by Frost of tricks to teleport. Fair. Uh, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think that Kukulin jungle, in an ideal world, you get really ahead and, and you just can be everywhere and you're transforming and you're unkillable and you're doing a lot of damage. That is best case scenario. And I just don't think that it happens often enough. And if teams just don't let you fight them around that time, it's, it's hard. Stewart in some trouble, but maybe there's turnaround potential here for one of our newest gods. Can't quite find the last few shots onto Gino, but he stands tall. Remember, this Horus, as potent as he is, only level one right now. Gino still hasn't gotten a whole lot of farm. If he's level two, that may have been a kill on yep. Stewart, but only sitting at level one makes it pretty difficult. I just think that this Horus is a good gank potential setup on that left-hand side. They might be lining up for a bit more. Can't quite find it. Stewart on this Heimdall did fall back. I suppose we could talk a bit about Heimdall, right, and some of some of his strengths right now. The Bifrost, obviously, <laughs> as you see just used there, is, is a big part of his strength. And by the way, this is how you should be using it. Yes. We want to see a zero Bifrost from the base to lane. Yes. Do not Bifrost from your base to the lane unless it's your, you get killed at level one and you re or you're level two or something like that and you really need to get back. You can't afford to miss that wave. And even then, it feels terrible. I, I do think that this is how good Heimdall players utilize that ability. It's every few steps, turn around, place behind you. Every few steps, turn around, place behind you. Just do that over and over and over again, and you'll end up being in a much better spot. You can use it as true safety, and Stewart's done it twice here so far. Heimdall is an interesting one, because I'm not really sure how good he is. I think that he can be very good. His oh, Relentless up. one doesn't look very good, taking a tower shot and getting killed because of it. He was trying to zone Aqua away from the blue buff so Anansir could successfully evade it, but ends up costing himself a, a bad first blood death. Heimdall is so susceptible to, to getting killed. I just want to make sure you know this is going out to the public. You're about to say that you don't think Heimdall's that good? I think he might not be that good <laughs> at this level. Sure. I think he has a ton of tools. He does. Dummy damage. Doesn't like, he know his autos, his abilities, everything is up. Everything. Oh, nice prediction by Gino. Gets the knock up, but takes a tower shot. Seems like that runs in the family almost. But good grasp of death. That gets him out of there. I mean, that certainly would have been a kill there, but Baskin feeling for his support yep. in some strange twist of fate. Yeah, but good reaction by Baskin. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe Gino and, and Russian Poppy, aka Relentless One, they are brothers. So That's right. They need to talk about not taking tower shots together. That's something that clearly both of them can work on. I don't know. Heimdall, he does so much damage, but he's so easy to set behind. And once he's behind, it's really, really hard for him to feel impactful. I, I do think he's a better long laner than mid laner. I think he's too unsafe in the mid lane. Agreed. I don't know. May maybe he's just so he does so much damage that it doesn't matter if you fall behind. But I think that... His biggest strength is, is one that I don't think a lot of players would really anticipate. And that's, number one, the vision, but I think a lot of people do value that highly. I think it's really hard to kill him as an assassin come mid to late game because he just out-trades you very effectively. Yeah. With that two, the ability to, to knock you back, to ult, to Bifrost himself out. I think good Heimdall players that can stay alive in the late game are going to give a lot of assassins problems. Heimdall certainly going to be one we're keeping track of all year long, man, not just within this game. I'm very excited to see how he gets used by the very best against the very best. So we'll keep our eyes on him. It is the restored artifact for both of our mages. This is the first time we have two traditional mages in here to see how these mage wow. builds shake out as Bask and the boys aggressively trying to strip away the red buff. But it looks like they're not able to defend no. it by locked and loaded, or locked and goaded rather. But this is our first time we're going to see two traditional mages building mage builds in this set, right? That's true. Yeah, that has It was Kukul Khan doing Book of Thoth and Hunters and all that. Yeah. I mean, I think Book is probably under bot right now, oh. even on gods that aren't Kukul Khan, because the other build paths just aren't that strong in my mind. And on characters that really don't want that much DDR, like I don't want Kronos pen on Scylla. What do I want that for? I want to one-shot people. I think that Book of Thoth is probably worth exploring on characters like that, but... It's still open, right? That's I think that uh, largely yeah, there is still a lot to find right. out with these mage builds. Yeah. Ab absolutely. I mean, we're week one of competitive play, and there were so many changes to mage builds with the, with the change of percent 10, kind of spreading it out across a lot of items, nerfing Obsidian Shard. I think that Obsidian, for a while I was on the never Obsidian train. Yeah. Now I'm, okay, maybe Obsidian's not too bad on certain gods. You can, you 
can make it work on certain gods and, and in certain compositions, really. If you're trying to kill tanks off of something like Horus set up, it's good to go Obsidian. Blink in from Anister, last breath on the Geno, but he misses with the ultimate. Turns out they don't need it from Stewart, just kind of styles him into better positioning, but they still find the kill. Didn't need it, but either way gets the kill. I mean, that's just a good play by Anister. The blink yep. in, double Cobra's kiss on the two different targets, and Geno is the easy one to lock down. Meerkat still have that ultimate. Good target selection, and Baskin and the boys again a little bit too far from the Baskin forced into that grasp of death. Sino, though, still able to chew right through that and get the kill. Does not help his boy break the grasp of death, though, but it doesn't matter. Penguin's able to make it out of there with no problem. I would like to take this opportunity to just say, please help us when we're in it. We all should auto-attack it. Get me out. Right? All the time. And yes. new Odin cage. <laughs> yes, thank you. Get me out, dude. It takes so long. It t I mean, it took people how long to get used to doing that for Kabrakens? Right. Like, literally two years. So by season nine, I should be <laughs> out of Odin cages, right, right around that timing, for sure. That, that's what we'll be expecting. Uh, there's, there's so much to talk about with all those new gods. We'll certainly have plenty of time to talk more about Odin sort of down the line here, but uh, there, there's just a ton of stuff with, with how he currently functions that would be fun to kind of dive into. But, but to stick to this match, we really have not seen Mask do much at all. And I think that that's purely because of this pick, right? I mean, right. It, it, what are his moments as Gino can't quite find Pagan under mid, takes a couple tower shots for the, for the pleasure? Uh, I think that you would expect level five to be a big a big power spike once he finishes what I assume will be Glad Shield in that spot. Maybe he starts to play more aggressively, but I don't love his odds there either. Anister aggressive, he's used Death Fame, but it's Gino who's using the To the Skies to move over the left. And he's been immediately caught. There's the ultimate from the Heimdall. We'll see him return and fall right back into the waiting clutches of Sino and Locked and Goaded. They find their second kill, or the first kill of this fight. Baskin, though, returns the favor. Anister gets locked down by the grasp of death. Still another fight selected by Gino that he just shouldn't have. Diving into two with that To the Skies ultimate, just not a wise decision. And, and Meerkat's already looked like he's had some trouble with Stewart in this lane matchup. Because again, Locked and Goaded has spent a lot of time over here. I don't think that you could ignore that, but Stewart has played very well up until this point with those leads. Don't gift them more. Right. You know, Gino's just handing them out. It, it, it's curious, man. I think that a lot of the skill gap for for Horus players is how well you can use that ultimate. Because a lot of cases, the base kit's enough, right? It does so much for you. But how much value you're able to get as Meerkat has his ultimate forced out in the left, out of to the skies in some creative ways, there's a pretty big gap there, too. Huge. I think that that is the, the, the separator. And how creatively you can use the three and a two. Maybe I pre-one to slow them for it. It's tough. Sino, rather, trying to get aggressive on the speed buff and strip it away. Has the destruction, so he knows he's not in danger of falling. And I like that. We don't often see destruction kind of just used as an Aegis to let you play aggressive, but I think that's what we just saw from Sino. I, it was a really good decision, and if you're not going to fight there as Kakullin, where <laughs> you know that Anister doesn't have ult, you are transforming. That's as strong as you're going to be in that moment. Great point. I mean, I guess Mask did have a lot of gold in hand. He backs and buys the full shifter shield. That's a big deal, but... You're not outscaling the Kali late game. So why are we why are we playing this pick? That's a great point, right? If now is not your time, it certainly ain't 20 minutes, right? Like right. it's only getting worse. A yeah, comparison just a, to the Sino. Just a weird decision. I don't know. I, I think that I mean Mask has always liked his early game pressure gods. He loves playing Robin, he loves playing Rat. Yeah. Those gods that just win you the game early. Guan, you can do that a lot of the time where he just snowballs out of control. You don't want Guan Yu late game very much. You really only want him there to heal you late game. You really only want him for damage in the early to mid. Horus, the sky has been used. Now there's suddenly three. Grass death has already locked down. Stewart, he uses Wrong the way. Bifrost to reposition, but still in range of Baskin's damage. So Stewart has fallen. What about Sino? The movement speed gets him out of there. Considering a re-engage, I like that he thinks better of it. This is the right call, though, by Baskin and the boys. Let's get a pick on that left-hand side, and let's get something going in our favor, because Locked and Goaded are really starting to run away with this early game, but they've got to secure this Gold Fury. Gold Fury low. Sino can't get in there. Neither can Anister. Baskin and the boys grab the objective easily. Mast does drop that ultimate. It is close to transforming as well, but still had the last breath ticking. Now the field comes in. Sino jumps in aggressively with the destruction, but everyone's so far from dying. Great knockup to prevent him from getting the reset, but Sino still gets the kill in the Meerkat either way. Still huge. I mean, one for one, Meerkat 
for Sino, 3-0 and on Sino, 0-0 and 3 for Meerkat. You're happy with that trade. You got Gold Fury. This is good. Master needs to be careful here. So does ah. Pagan here in the middle lane as he goes left and Baskin assumes right and the ultimate doesn't really find a whole lot of anything there. But that last fighter on the Gold Fury, that's what we want to see more of from these guys as Lord of the Afterlife used aggressively and is still level 7 trying to fight into these behemoths. Makes it out of there though. This is, that was a, a heads up play by Baskin. You kind of take your, your shot. Just a good presence of mind by Pagan to go somewhere a little bit different. You still, uh, you still forced him out of that lane. I mean, I, I feel like this is still not enough, though, for Baskin and the boys. This comp does not impress me late game. It just doesn't. I mean, Locked and Goaded, they've got a much better late game composition exclusively because of Kali. Exclusively because of Kali. I'm sure Merlin didn't hurt either. Stewart Hello. has caught Meerkat, and that's an easy cleanup kill for him. Just about every time when you land, it's going to be hard to make it out. Sino jumps over this new mid-camp wall. If you've got leaps, you're, you're still relatively safe there, but if you do not, that is a death zone a lot of the time. It's so tough to get out of there without a leap, but it does make gods like Kali, Fenrir, yep. Sirket, uh even better than they already were to, to give them that extra mobility option and really lock down gods that don't have that option. Sino's on the wrong Great side ball. of the map. Grasp of death coming from off screen. He's still tethered to it, though. Jumps his way out of there, but Aqua's waiting for him the second that he lands. Easy cleanup kill with Sino going a bit too far. Baskin has been really on the money with these ultimates. Not just in this game, but in game one. I thought yeah. he had really good ultimate target selection. The ability to use it. He's been accurate with it. It's not as easy as it looks to land those long-range shots. You can kind of hear that sound cue coming from a little bit further away than you think at times. Baskin with another good lockdown, and Sino was 3-0. and Now 3-2. and That's a loud mask to catch up pretty quickly. If all you want is for the, the big range around grass with death to connect, and it is very easy, right? But yes. if you want that initial damage, if you want that first, if you want to use it in the jungle in those narrow, long sight lines, then it, it takes a lot. As Aqua in some trouble here in right, has already used Lord of the Afterlight, has Tether on both, so he can keep right on fighting. Has now been hit by the last breath, so that means the sustained remove. But Mast is on his way here to provide some much needed backup, but Pagan is that much stronger. The Merlin comes in and cuts Aqua down. I feel like Mask is entering every fight half HP. It's, it's just kind of <laughs> catching me off guard. I don't know. I don't know if he's just taking too much damage by clearing the jungle or what. And now Mask being high on the jungle, just trying to do those back camps. Anister can't stick on him too long. Grasp of Death has locked down one member. That's easy for them to take down Relentless One. Baskin Man has been that saving grace for this team, but in comes the Horus, provides the shield to two. Sino wants to leap in, but now he's been knocked up. Gets some good backup from Pagan, and that does force two members out of the fight. Wow. Anister falls. Baskin continuing to keep them alive. And Sino's still hunting him, but Baskin's gone north. He's got it underneath that tier two tower, and Meerkat may Hello. find himself a kill here, but Sino still has all. Uses destruction, jumps back in to try and find a kill. Meerkat finds the stun, though, with the healthiest HP pool. Oh, Sino wow. still gets the kill, though, delayed on the Baskin. Not just getting the kill, but resets those the stacks on the path. So greedy by Baskin to try and stay there and, and stay in assist range, so to speak. A great lash by Sino. That, that dot damage is no joke, man. I mean, that cr I, I think Crusher Kali is kind of a, a split argument. Do you like going Crusher early? Do we like just going straight into Haste and Katana, go into Chin Size, get your kind of engine rolling, so to speak? Crusher Kali, I think, is so good. Flat Pen is just really solid. Lash does a lot of damage. You, you get a ton of power from your, from your three as well. I think that this is the way to go. It, it really bridges you into the mid to late game very, very well, and it pays off right there. He's able to get a ton of damage off and get a kill onto Baskin, who I would assume was his target with the way he was playing it. But it also, remember, gives him extra gold. Who cares if he doesn't get the heal? He gets extra gold in that moment, so just accelerates him even more. Baskin elects for Kronos pen in that first slot, whereas Pagan elects to go with the Karam's coin hmm. to kind of show you those different mentalities. That must be a tough decision, though, for Morgan, because you probably want the movement speed and the extra CDR, right? They're both pretty valuable. Yeah, there are a lot of characters, I think, that have those moments where you kind of want both. I think Merlin's one of them. I, I think that the Kronos pen on Merlin is one of the more feel-good options that you can go for, but Pagan must feel like he needs a lot of proc items. It looks like he's actually going Staff of Mirrodin yeah. very, very early which did get pent. Baskin has now lost the feed, turns around though with the grasp of death and that locks down Sino. Sino, still alive, gets in close with the destruction, but Mast 
shuts him down for it handily. Stewart, though, not to be outdone, finds one kill of his own, so it's one for one, at least so far. Mass, though, has been collapsed up against the wall, so Pagan gets him, but one more member fell. It was Anna, so the support for Locked and Goaded that also dropped. That leaves Relentless One deep in enemy territory, and I don't think reinforcements are on the way. I say that. Pagan shows in, but he's now getting collapsed on by Aqua in the back. Meerkat needs a little bit more damage, but I'm not sure he really has it. Beads are used just to try and get this kill. Good stun what? coming from him as well, but Relentless One, pretty tanky. Aqua finally finishes him off with a Spirit Flail over the wall. Credit goes to Aqua in that fight because there were help. There was help coming for Relentless One, but he, even with a fairly low health bar, is able to keep both Stuart and Pagod at bay and buy Meerkat enough time to chew through this tier. That was such a difficult fight, though, wasn't it? You're right, Aqua had great posi positioning kind of on the back of the fight, and it made the reinforcements for Relentless One when, like, like, we don't want to commit to this, then we're trapped between Aqua, right? So it really put him in such a tough spot. Great work for him. Now they'll come towards the Oni Fury, and they should be able to grab this one. Stewart's DPS is high enough, has a little bit of backup coming after Pagan as well. Nice job grabbing the objective. And don't forget that he has that vision coming from that first ability. Exactly. The sword goes up. He can see everywhere. He knows if there's anybody contesting from Baskin and the boys. I think a big thing for Heimdall is going to be how well can you communicate? The, those silent carry players that don't talk a whole lot, Heimdall might not be for you because you're the only one that gets all this information on where everybody is on the map at a given time. They walk over a ward, I get to see them for three extra seconds as they walk away. That's your job to communicate that. Pat has been caught out by the Horus, but the real target here is Sino. He leaps away, but up onto the horse, to the skies as well. They want to commit to remove Sino from the map, but Sino barely makes his way out. Grasp of Death gets blocked by Pagan as well, so Sino should be out of this fight. Meanwhile, Relentless One, still right in the thick of it, in between four, makes his way out of there. Locked and goaded now, going to fall back underneath his tier one after getting Sino out. Man, this tier is doing so much healing, living forever. Meerkat does have Executor now, so that helps. And they've got some anti-kill coming out too as Relentless One tries to move in. Somehow he skates his way out of there too, but Anninster, overly ambitious, goes in with the last breath and ends up falling almost immediately. That should now be the tier one and the kill for Baskin. The boys and Mass blinks in. Finally, the Kakullin getting some value too as he finds Stuart. And just enough damage on that snap to get the job done. That's tier one tower, but Sido, after losing a lot of HP, looped around the side, thought maybe I can get involved. Didn't find a good angle. Let's go get some farm on the right-hand side. That's what all the good players do is find farm where they can. No way you're continuing that fight anyways. We get a tier one tower on that right-hand side. We continue to get farm for this Kali. Despite slowing down a little bit, has been one and three since starting off three and oh. It's got chin size now. It's still a fine place to be in. The only thing that you might be concerned about now is they're just collective power curves going forward, right? I mean, Baskin and the boys, Probably pretty close to their best right around now, as opposed to Locked and Goaded, who have a lot more still to go. The Kinsai is just finished for Sino, a huge item for him on this Kali. Biggest power spike that you can get on Kali is, the, is this Chin size, if not that Crusher first item, because that really does make you actually a relevant character in the early game. But with the quick attack chain from the Kali, this lets you kill just about anybody on the map at any given time. Now, I mean, you know, Basket has no Aegis for over, for over a minute. Let's get involved. Like near the Fire Giant, but not actually over the Fire Giant itself. Lots of focus exchange. But everybody okay? I don't think this is the point in the game where you really want to be heavily committing on this side of the map, so I doubt we'll see these next few fights. So so I guess recontextualize a little bit for me where we think these two teams are in terms of like relative strength. I think that I agree with your assessment that Bass and the boys are pretty strong. What was I thinking that you'd have time to cheer two for a little bit? <laughs> uh, last breath ends up coming out. Lawbringer committed as well. Grasp of Death is branching out onto everyone, though. A huge ultimate coming out from Baskin, but he's low in the back. Sino falls, though, to the pressure from Mass. To the skies means they want to recommit. The Horus drops in shields for everyone, and they're going to look for more members. But Relentless One may be giving his life away to push more members out. Meanwhile, Anster on the long flank finds nothing. The Relentless One does end up falling a huge fight for B&B. Huge for Baskin and the boys. And the matter is, can we get a lot off of it? Again, their objective damage is not very good. Their secure is not impressive. Locked and Goda don't have that big steel ultimate this time around like they had with Pagan and Kukul Khan. Merlin really just a DPS machine. 
but still enough to, to make you think twice about this, this Fire Giant. He is on a ward as, as visible as you can be, so this will not be a surprise. They force him back, but this is more about trying to see if he can delay and buy some time. Remember, they don't have a ton of DPS for this objective, so it's not going quickly. Fire Giant's still low, and they're not sure if they want to try and commit to it, but into the back comes Anna's no Graham, way. leaps in, okay. but Baskin and the boys secure the objective. Whew. It's not as bad as it might have looked. Stewart on the meanwhile on the left-hand side has lost purification beads, but might have a chance at this 1v1 because he just does too much with those auto attacks. It's very difficult to stand box up against the high call. And Baskin's one of those guys. If he was favored there to win the fight, he'd have taken it. Yeah. So I think he correctly recognized how much turnaround potential there is from that Heimdall there and backed off in that fight. But now Baskin and the boys geared up with FG. This is huge because now they've got to, the opportunity to get a little bit more than a 1,000 gold lead at this point in the game. But they've got to hurry up and, and get grouped. Aqua's not here on the left side of the map with Gold Fury spawning in 20 seconds. Who cares about this blue buff? Who cares about this right-hand side wave? Let's, let's group. Why, why are we grouping around this Gold Fury, getting ward coverage? That's the first objective we get that allows us to transition well into that left-hand tier one. I think that's the direction the Bastion and the Boys should be going. They look a little bit, not, not discombobulated necessarily, but a little bit slower on the uptake. I think a lot of SPL level teams are on that Gold Fury the second it spawns. This is very curious. Look at how the map has divided. Everyone on Bask and the Boys, except for one, is in left. Meanwhile, the entirety of Locked and Goder are kind of in right, just looking for what they can take over there. They will get the Pyromancer and strip away the rest of that farm. Meanwhile, Basket and the Boys is going to keep taking towers as long as there's no one here to stop them. That's two that they've run right past. Now the back's coming out from Locked and Goaded. They're going to have to hurry if they want to get in position to defend. They'll be here for it, but will Basket and the Boys commit to a full-on fight? In goes Anister, and he blows up immediately masked and the rest of the squad get the kill, but Sino has taken down Baskin, locked and goaded, fully defending. Baskin never got the Aegis off. Sino still has the ultimate, is gonna use it now aggressively, but Meerkat's found his fifth in a row on the left-hand side. Sino has good damage, but chewing through that Kakulin is so difficult at this point now that he's full-on tanky. So four up against two, and they'll threaten the left side Phoenix. Really not much chance that locked and goaded can full-on defend this. They'll be hoping they can just stop the bleeding from here. Great fight for Baskin and the boys. The fact that Baskin dies without using that Aegis is, and they still win like that is, is a huge win for B&B, &B, but they don't get Gold Fury. That gold lead is still not that high right now, but this does buy them an awful lot of map pressure. So I've been kind of noticing as this Tier 2 tower should come down in favor of Baskin and the boys, perhaps not as much more on exclusion with a little bit of a soft defense there. But they'll let them disengage at this point. Maybe not, though. Relentless one still nearby. Locked and Goaded might want to see if they can find anything on the back end of this fight. Anister goes in, last breath on the mass. Maybe not the priority target for that ability, but Gino low in the back. Pagon finds that kill. Aqua, as well as Mass, should now be able to get out of their grasp of death from long range. Doesn't really find much. So I can ask you what I've been wanting to ask all game. Yeah. There's a lot of anti-heal over here for Baskin and the boys. Do you feel like it's that necessary to buy and ruin Pestilence, Brawlers, Contagion? Do they need all that? Yeah, I like it because it, it, that's the big thing that I think people have understood about Kali long term. It's like, oh man, she gets a full heal whenever she kills a target she wants. That's so OP. She's full health. She heals her whole health bar. If only there were some way we could <laughs> stop that from happening. So, oh yeah, anti-heal works against that. You can make sure that it's only a halfway reset, and then it's a lot harder for Sido to one five you in these team fights. Plus, I mean, look at how well Relentless One was able to, to front line in the earlier team fights. Then we got all this anti-heal. All of a sudden, he's a, it's a lot easier to surround and, and kill this guy. I, I like this amount of anti-heal. You don't lose that much DPS anyways. It's the right idea. That's right. And anti-heal nowadays is a lot easier to build, I think, than it once was. So. This is a great idea from Bask and the boys. There's a lot of adaptation from them in these builds. A Witch Blade over there as well for Mass. That's going to make life harder I like for it. Stewart and for Sino, both of them. Yep, I like it a lot. It's great against Sino. It allows you to take better fights. You're never winning that 1v1 as Kakulin versus Kali at 25 minutes, but it gives your team a better chance to, to get that Kali down before she can take down a priority target. The one thing I'm noticing, though, is that Baskin is really lacking percent pen at this point. He's yep. got a little bit of flat pen from the Divine Ruin, 10% pen from that Soul Reaver, and that's it. That's all we got. So that it, Relentless One should be able to identify that and say, I can just chase Baskin 
basically forever. It's going to take him a long time for him to kill me or a significant amount of help. And ideally, if it requires him a whole lot of help, then you can end up pay making them pay for overgrouping on your soul. Sino is elected for this Odysseus' bow at the back end of his build. And it's a ton of attack speed, right? That's, yep. just, that's almost all that it is. And that bounce feels so good. You like that here for the Kali, as opposed to maybe even like an Executioner or something like that? I do for two reasons. Number one, it's bounce damage, but it also procs on the target that you hit. So it is bonus damage every three autos yep. with, with your percent power. And it's really easy to body block the target away from you when you're playing Kali. The, those frontliners that stand in front of you, and it's hard to get on them. You can get it with those. Fire Giant started and leashed, and Sino Low forced into the destruction very early on in the fight. So the skies is going to be used to come over and provide some reinforcements to the left hand side. So a lot expended. Three ultas from Baskin of the Boys, but they do force Locked and Goaded out and get a lot of relics. A lot of bees burned on the side of Locked and Goaded. The two most important beads, I'd say, which are Pagon and Sino, is both on the They're going to be so much more vulnerable here in this next fight. Fire Giant below half HP, but what's the best to confirm here at this point? Anister goes in again. Now Dashing committed the ambush and the death bane, so there's no way back out for a mask. Gets that kill quite easily, but look how low these health bars are for B&B. &B. No way they can stick around and do FG now. And all five ultimates on cooldown. Good use of Anister's life, understanding that his job isn't to live in that part. It's, try it's to get everybody off of a fire giant. He does exactly that and is able to force Basket and the boys back to base. And this might buy Sino time to get that ultimate back up. And if he knows the beads are down for both Basket and Meerkat, which they are, if he's got his blink coming up, that's kill potential right there for Sino. And remember, these last few fights have favored Baskin and the boys, but I think that's because they've been hitting their stride right around that time. The later this goes, Odysseus Bow, Titan's Bane finished for this Kali. She's really starting to get into her stride. The Staff of Mirrodin into Soul Reaver is finished, and even one more item coming on the back of the Pagan's build, too. Locked and Goated are certainly ready here for this next fight, but Fire Giant low already. They've got to get in there and defend this one, or else Baskin and the boys are just stripping away, and they do. I don't know if Locked and Goated. Oh! So smart by Baskin, finds exactly where Sino's going to be. That may have been fully blind because Sino cleared a wave and then the minion wave is gone. I don't know that Baskin could necessarily see him from that distance, but ends up fighting with a perfect ultimate. That's a huge pick onto Sino, who they knew didn't have beads. And I was going to say, this was a really good spot for Locked and Goaded. Felt like Baskin points had all this momentum, but they were only up about 3k. No Fire Giant anymore, and that left side Phoenix had respawned for Locks and Goaded. But now, 5v4 without your late game Kali makes it a lot harder. It's going to be a very difficult defense in here for Locked and Goaded, but they've got some of the tools. Merlin feels great on defense to try and help out. Heimdall yep. not so bad either. His poke is pretty substantial. And great positioning here from Anister at the back of the fight. I think they know that he's here, though. We just saw Meerkat turn around, so they shouldn't catch him by surprise. With Anister dropping that ward, they definitely know. He still has the opportunity to get in there and, and make a play happen. All the way to the back of the right side, Phoenix now. They force Stewart all the way out. That's the Heimdall removed. Really just relentless one in there now. They're trying to keep this from happening. And they're in there too, and really no damage has been put to the right side, Phoenix. Yet, and Sino is suddenly back. The chainsaw has been brought out of the shed. Baskin has fallen for a Sino force to go on the full disengage, and Baskin gets there for the one-for-one -one trade. That's huge from him. But Anders are still lurking. No ultimate for him. Doesn't seem like a great engagement, but that Phoenix took next to no damage. Yeah. A great fight from Sino. That you cannot have your Kali player be passive at 29 minutes. Yep. That's the that's the go time for you. If you're not if you're not playing like that at 29 minutes, don't pick the god. So Cat and Inster on this Cat behind everyone here again with this great positioning, but hasn't been able to find much. Relentless one stepping up though knows he's really the tankiest one. Kind of has to be that frontline presence for the lockdown. Gino underneath the tower, some Phoenix damage coming out, but not a lot. Gino cannot find the next bit of CC, so Anister goes in with the Cobra's kiss. Lawbringer right there to follow up, and Aqua Low has uh -oh. to fall back out. Meerkat has been brought back in, and Stewart gets the kill there. They end up losing their mid laner and their jungle. Mass just a little bit too far forward. This Kakulin jungle has not done a whole lot. 7, 2, and 9 looks good, and he's gotten some decent damage off, but the impact just really has not been felt, in my mind, on this Kakulin. It just uh, oftentimes has done exactly that, just easily focused, no beads for him, an easy, fearless pickup, and right into that Phoenix, and another failed siege by Baskin and the boys. So they have been successfully slowed down now by Locked and Goaded who are in position to start bringing a late-game Heimdall, a late-game Kali, a late-game Merlin, 
The only question, though, is do they have enough in terms of their front line to facilitate around for those guys? I think we saw Anister working on a Lono was the last time we saw his build up in that mass screen. That looks like that'll help out a lot. But Primal Fury, the current discussion, locked him go to grab it. Grasp of Death used by this. Persephone, and that helps lock down Anister to punish him, but the rest of Locked and Goaded should be out. And again, just not easily breakable from that distance. Stewart a little bit too far back. He's your guy who's going to break it the majority of the time, but Heimdall with that slower attack speed and travel time on those basic attacks yep. makes it even harder to, to get Anister out of danger. Full crit build, though, from Meerkat at this point. Has the Poison Star, has the Rage fully evolved, and is almost there with what I gotta think is gonna be a Death Bringer next to follow that back up. So still, another significant power spike coming from Meerkat, but they want this middle Phoenix. Relentless one goes underneath and forces Meerkat to use the Ajutsu and the Purification Beads. That's a big win for Locked and Goaded. Aquarius already half HP. Sino wins the battle against Mass, jumps in, finds the first kill, finds a double kill as he takes down Baskin as well. Begon comes back in to get one more. They do end up losing Sino, but three for one. Well, you gotta love your chances now as Locked and Goaded. Mass just in no man's land in between the Phoenixes and Sino doesn't hesitate even a little bit. Titan's Bane and a Stone Cutting Sword now means that all this protection from, well, frankly, just the Shifter Shield, but all this HP from Frostbound and Witchblade and all this stuff doesn't matter. Who cares? I've got Chin Size and a bunch of pen at this point. I'll kill you in six autos. And those six autos come out pretty fast on Kali, it turns out. Mask never gets to impact the fight. Baskin, again, dies. Has Aegis up now. Not sure that he did at the time, but I don't know how much it would have mattered. Th this Odysseus boat means that even if you can create a little bit of distance, it's probably not going to be enough. If you're low enough that one Odibo chain kills you, you're probably dead. And remember how that fight kind of starts. Relentless One does a good job finding Meerkat and pulling the beads from him, so... It's so much harder for them to grab him, and I speak of all this because now Meerkat, kind of left alone, has no way away from all this control. Does get some backup coming his way, though, in the form of Gina, who's now burning beneath the flames. Smart. But good job coming back to him to give him a target to go to with that leap. Heads up play by Meerkat yep. and, good, and good use of that out given to him by Gino. So got to stick around, though. You can't really give up a fire time at this point feel comfortable. To the skies has been used. They might be willing to commit. Aquarius, I think, teleported all the way to the back end of this fight. So Fire Giant has been dropped. The Basque and the boys show they're here in full strength. That should be enough for the reset. And as soon as they get there, Mask loses Purification Beats again because he gets Fearless by Relentless One. 0, 4, and 10 doesn't look like a good score line, but I think the Relentless One has had good impact in these late game team fights. His CC is very relevant. Yeah, I think there was a bit of a mid-game point where he struggled. Yep. But the early and late, he's certainly been strong there for them. Big fight in the jungle now. Gino, the furthest member forward. Another good grasp of death. These Persephone ults have been great with Baskin, but Meerkat needs some help. No, that's Mass, who's been shot off the screen. He'll certainly die on impact. Stewart gets the credit there for that one. Kali in the destruction and trying to lock down Gino and managed to survive with low HP. Baskin finally gets the last bit of damage. It's one for one, jungle for jungle. And it's Sir Asta jump out. These carries are very healthy for Baskin and the boys. Baskin has both relics up at this point, and Meerkat's about to be in the same boat. This could be a good pull, especially if they catch Anister lazy backing behind the fire giant. But Anister survived. Has that Lono, as you mentioned yeah. earlier, on finish now. He's going to be a much better tank for them in that front line. Pretty, pretty tough to kill him. Even as an assassin, Lono basically transforms your base stats into Super Guardian, but heavily nerfs your damage output. But who cares? You're not really there for damage output at this point. Yep. As Sir Cat support, you're there for CC and being that annoying fly that you can't quite swat as a backliner. And if the, if you're not dying to the full Horus combo and to auto attacks from a, a six slotted ADC at that point, that really speaks to how much damage you can really withstand. What would you want to see Anister go with this last slot? He could still go Magi's, Mantle at Mantle. this point. Mantle. Mantle is what you'd want? Yeah, Mantle. I mean, actually, Magi's wouldn't be bad because it prevents you from getting completely locked down by that initial hit of Persephone ult. Now, it wouldn't stop the long-range tendrils if someone else gets hit by it because those aren't hard CC. That's, that's a cripple, which does not proc Magi's, but you would stop getting hit by it. So it would matter at least a little bit, but Mantle's just so efficient. It gives you so much protection and a great get-out-of-jail-free card with that CC Clans plus stun combo.
the Anister likely going to round out of this build there. Relentless one is taking quite a bit of damage. Gets some backup, though, from Anister. Goes right to the back line. Puts the last breath on the basket. Still has the ambush to get away, too. Aqua, though, not having nearly as much success on his die. Finally gets some backup from Mass. But Mass starting to get shredded by Pagan. Aqua ends up falling. Relentless hunts him down. Steward puts Mass in the dirt. Sino finds basket. Oh, no. This is starting to look a bit like disaster now for B&B. &B. Remember, this is their last chance. If they lose this game, they are done in this tournament so far. And it'd be a clean sweep for Locked and Goaded, which would really be impressive for this squad. It looks like that might be the case. They don't lose the game here, do Basket and the boys, but you can't feel good about your odds if you're going to give up a, an enhanced fire giant, you, which you have to do. You can't, yes. you can't go in and contest this 5v2, but their defense does not look particularly inspiring. Persephone is very good on the defensive, but this amount of blinks on the other side. I mean, how many blinks went off there? Three from Locked and Goaded, and all of those are targets that you have to really respect. Anister's got so much CC, so does Relentless One, and sino has got all the damage. And there seems to be no hesitation from Locked and Goaded either. They're, gonna try, They're gonna try and barrel right in. This is the right call. Ten seconds before B&B &B have full numbers to try and make the defense, so it's just on Horus and Meerkat. And this Titan is starting to get shredded. Relentless One gets rid of Geno, and that does it. Wow. Locked and Goaded, 3-0 over Baskin and the boys. Impressive stuff, and that was I think the best that we saw Bastion and the boys play close late game two yep. fights. Obviously, they had a big lead in game two that didn't come to fruition. But Meerkat looked very, very good on the Hachiman that time around. Bastion again impressed on the Persephone. I just really did not like that Kakullin jungle pick. I thought yep. that did very, very little to really contribute in this game. Seven and one or seven and two at one point for Mask. Falls all the way down to seven and five. But it really wasn't even happening in that early game. It was mid game that it started to, to click. But eventually, it just wasn't enough. It's so hard to kill a, a Merlin with a pick like a Cullen Jungle. Pagan goes 4-0, 32,000 player damage, a great performance from him. It, all three games, the two Kukulkan games and this Merlin game, Pagan impressed. Yeah, when you think about the dive that Bask and the boys were having to deal with compared to that, of what Locked and Goaded had to deal with, it really just was not comparable, was it? Baskin, despite playing well, was under so much duress. Even Anister, especially in those last couple of fights, committed everything he had to get back there and make sure Baskin wasn't free cast. It's impossible to, to really stop a, a dive to that level for Locked and Goaded. Eventually, it was just going to be too much with Sino making plays, getting, getting his hands dirty consistently. A couple from the grave lash kills. And Persephone's great, but you have to use Flourish so aggressively at times that it's very, very difficult to always find the, the right moments to, to go aggressive with that Persephone pick. And it's not a particularly long leap either. Sino, this was such a big play where Mir or Mass rather tries to come up and catch him behind that Phoenix. And, and Sino at that point, maybe Aqua could trade with him officially with Nemean and Tether, maybe all those tools together, but no one really stands to Sino in that 1v1. And that was the problem. They just didn't have any real way to try and take Sino out of those fights the longer the game went too. That, that's, the, that's the ultimate question every time we play against Kali. Do we have a contingency plan? What happens when we get to late game? And I just don't think Bastion and the boys had enough in the tank at that point. Well, remember, we're only doing one of those semifinals here with this format. That means we're going right to the finals. So we know that Locked and Goaded are going to be there. But don't worry, we're going to break down everyone that's in this match and more after this next break.